Today, I'm joined by NFL champion and author Michael Orr to talk about his amazing new book, When Your Back's Against the Wall. Congratulations on a new book. Um, I'm a diehard Ravens fan. Uh, I'm a Baltimore guy. I'm, a, I'm always rooting for you. How's it going? What's going on, man? Uh, good to talk with somebody from Baltimore. I actually just got off the phone, uh, did an interview with somebody from Baltimore. Everything's great. Uh, big Raven fan myself. Uh, obviously won a lot of games for the Ravens and absolutely, you know, still getting it. I'm glad they got the contract done with Lamar, man. I think that was a big distraction. Hopefully, man, we were uh, scared. We were scary, bro. We we were scared, man. We was, <laughs> you know, we, we, we thought he was going, we thought we was going to lose him. I saw fans talking about they were good with the uh, Huntley though. So, well, you know, you know cause he, they were, they were delusional. They were like, you know, this is the real well, fans. That was a, <laughs> well, that was a coping mechanism. <laughs> man. So I'm telling you, nah, Lamar different, man. Uh, I'm a big fan of my, you know, when I was playing, you know, had Joe was great, but Jesus, Lamar, he saves the team probably 25 sacks a game a year. He different, bro. He different. Man, he, he's uh, the, one of the best athletes I've seen. He different, man. Um, I, you know, when your back's against the wall is, 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 is such, such an important book. Um, and you know, I think, um, you know, and just hearing how passionate you, you, you talk about sports, um, and how, you know, a lot of times I, I, you know, I think a lot of athletes, um, feel like they don't really think about life after football. And I think you do a great job touching on that. Yeah. Um, you know, my thought process, it, it was sports. Sports was great. But for me, I was using sports to be comfortable. From the time I can remember at three years old, uh, I was homeless, uh, in and out of foster care shelters on the street. So when I got a chance to where I was going to be able to get a job, be an adult, I was going to do everything in my power so I can live a comfortable life. And you have to understand, especially as an athlete, it doesn't last forever. Forever, mm -hmm. I, I knew that. I understood very early on that I wasn't the best athlete around. You know, when we got in the middle of the streets to race, I was I, I almost lost. They used to have to give me thirty yards to run, mm -hmm. uh, to a <laughs> head start, and couldn't jump. Uh, went the went the fastest, just all of that stuff. So I understood where my talents was, and I were and. I knew I was going to have to outwork people. I knew I was going to have to outsmart. And I knew sports weren't going to be the end all. You know, that's why I'm still chasing greatness and inspiring youth and motivating right now because I know the impact that I can have on someone who doesn't have that ability to go out, be a big offensive lineman and go out and get scholarships. And it, it's so much more. And you can, it's so much more in, you can have less stress mentally and physically, and you can go have longevity at a career, career where you can work 20, 30 years. And it's so many more opportunity out there other than sports and entertainment. And that's what I want to drive home and having a work ethic and having a routine, being consistent, being disciplined, you know, at something, at, at anything, and you can be great at it. You, you do you do a great job at that. What's what's one thing you don't miss about playing in the NFL? One thing I don't miss about playing in the NFL, and uh, and I actually enjoyed, I I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed playing football. Uh, I would say probably, I don't know. It's not a lot. It's not a lot because I appreciated. I didn't take anything for granted uh, about playing in the NFL. Uh, it's a great game. It's what got me to got me out of poverty. It got me out of the, the uh, environment that I was in into a better situation, a better life. So now the NFL is great. You know, probably, uh, I don't know, probably the, I was going to say the fans, man, but now I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the fans talking trash about you, man, when you, uh, you you're I, having a, uh, having I ain't a rough, never... <laughs> rough game. I ain't never played no professional sport, but I probably would have said practice. I'd be like, man, we talking about practice? <laughs> nah, nah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed yeah, it. Right. I enjoyed practice. Every practice to me was a game. You know, I was the first one in the facility, the last one out. I took it all serious. Uh, you know, I, I appreciated every second 
that I was in. Do you think the league does it does enough to prepare athletes for retirement? Or or, or not even I don't even, I don't want to say retirement like in general, but like to set them, you know, for that that second act, the conversations around what is that second act going to be after you stop playing? I think the NFL does a great job at uh, putting the information in front of you. Mm-hmm. Now it's up to you to meet them halfway to be able to go and find, do something with that information. The NFL PA, they send you tons of emails. They have uh, internships for you, but with the NFL college football, football is such a tough sport where you have to be into it mentally mm-hmm. every day. 24 hours a day, every day of the year. And you can't think about anything else but mm. football. I see the guys now they're doing other things uh, off the field. But if you want to have a, a, a consistent, uh, good career, your team want to win year in and year out, that organization is only focused on one thing, and that's winning football games. And that's the bottom line. You know, you you talk about uh, making that transition in the book. Um, what are what are some of the things you feel like uh, athletes and and just fans of Michael Orr should know about um, what it took for you to make the transition? Well, it's hard. You're doing something that you've been doing all your life, mm-hmm. uh, football. So it all comes down for me. It was a legacy piece for me. I wanted a bigger legacy than what I had, and when I walked away from the. Uh, Field. I was blessed to be in a position. I'm honored to have the platform that I have to be able to reach back out and you come the way that I grew up. You know, no kids should have to grow up. And I know there's so many other hopeless kids out there who think their 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 life's over right now. Mm-hmm. And I was one of those kids at one point. But I knew if I gave some effort, if I met this world halfway. And that was doing the right thing every day, going to school on my own from the time I was in third grade, uh, not getting involved in the uh, the games and the violence that was around me and not joining that uh, atmosphere. So, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. That's why I wrote this book, because there's so many of those kids out there like myself who don't realize the potential that they have, but it's up to guys like yourself, guys like me who know what potential looks like, who are who's able to go out here and create a, a podcast and be able to talk to guys like me. You have to reach back out and see the find the potential, see the kid who wants to do uh, great things that don't have the resources and opportunities and point them in the right direction. Uh, but they have to want it for themselves. If you don't want it for yourself, I mean, it's not going to happen at all. So you have to meet people halfway and Absolutely. also have to look yourself in the mirror and let, and, and tell yourself, uh, you know, what I'm doing is not the correct way of doing things. So I think that's the most important. Um, in the book, you, you also, you, you, you do a deep dive into your relationship with, with the blind side. And like, you know, I've heard bits and pieces of how you felt about the actual film throughout the years. So it was really, really good hearing it from you. I think a lot of people um, who, who are watching this and who are going to read your book um, would just like to hear you just, you know, talk about the differences between the Michael that we all met on screen versus the Michael in, in real life. And, and and how do you bridge that gap? Well, uh, like I said, from the time I was three years old to 18, uh, that's when the movie really uh, started to portray my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I had ambition, very grateful for the platform and, it's still inspiring and motivating uh, people across this world. So I'm grateful, grateful, grateful for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I had drive, I uh, had ability to want to succeed and be something. And it didn't show the work ethic that the work ethic that I put in to get to that point. So, and that's, you have to understand that came out 2009. So, you know, I was, when I moved in with the family, I was an all American uh, football player already. Ready. People don't. People don't get that. They don't get that I, from the film. I was eighteen, and I moved in with them a couple of years before high school. So, mm. I mean, a couple a uh, couple of weeks before my senior year of high school. So, uh, I had been through the journey that I had already traveled was a success in its own. 
know, coming from where I came from. So you have to give some credit right there. And that's what I want young people to understand and not look at something and say, you need, I'm waiting on my savior. I'm waiting on this quick fix. I'm waiting on someone to come and uh, give me this handout. And that was never my mentality. You know, I was putting it in my mind that I was going to be something from 11 years old when I started this journey. I wanted to be successful. It didn't have to be football. It didn't have to be sports. Mm -hmm. I was going to be a, a positive influence on society. If I had to have three, four jobs, I was going to be working. I was going to be doing something that can give me longevity can give me a peace of mind, can give me comfort. So I think it missed, uh, it missed in, in those aspects, but you know, I wouldn't be uh, who I was. That's a, you know, small part of my story. Have to get credit to from ninth, 10th, 11th grade. I was sleeping on the floors of uh, other people's houses, getting to school and just fighting. So, you know, you, you still have to put the work in. It doesn't matter where you are or what you're going through, what situation you're in. As long as you have that want to in you, it's it, it's a lot of simple things. Some of the principles and the, in the playbook that I have in this new book, when your back's against the wall, they're in there. And if you feel if you're feeling hopeless, you're paralyzed with fear that you're you're not gonna be, you can't go on, and you can't get it done. Pick up this book right here, and it'll change your life. No, you the whole there's you know the whole second part of the book is is just you sharing that that kind of knowledge and and, and wisdom. Um, you, you felt like there were a whole lot of lessons that you didn't have when you were in the league, or um, the lessons I had. No, I had these lessons right here here helped me get uh through the uh through the NFL. Uh, right. Being positive, uh, having that work want to uh mentality you know like i said in the nfl i was the first one in the facility facility last one out the facility uh you know in the locker room you know that's where that's where it counts the most you know that's what that's what i love more than anything because you can be yourself you know outside the locker room people think they know you and you're you're misunderstood so um no i, I think the these lessons here they can translate into anybody from young people, if you're not, you know, re reaching the accolades that you want to reach, if you're not uh, going climbing the ladder at your, in your field, at your job, you know, you have to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I putting in the extra work before? Am I, uh, when it's time to clock out, am I running out the door or am I putting extra work in to get better? So or, you know, yeah, it, it applies I, I guess to I everyone. I guess I meant like when I was when I was looking at it, when I was reading it, I felt like um, I'm like, damn, like I think about, you know, I'm in my 40s now, but I think about some of the things I wish my 40 year old self could say to my 20 year old self. And I kind of like felt like um, you had the opportunity to just reflect and to just talk about all of these things you've learned throughout the years and put them together in one place. That's uh, that's just growth and learning, that's Absolutely. Like growing and learning. You have course uh if i could go back i you can you change some things uh but unfortunately you, you can't do it so what i'm doing now is you know even talking to my younger self or someone who uh is already you know headed for greatness but they need a tool and i was always chasing tools but i didn't have the correct circle around me to you know feed me you want for me i've always wanted I like, I love being around people that are better than me, that are smarter than me. Then I can be myself. I can grow even more, you know, because it's a lot of people who don't like being around people. They like to be the fi big fish in a big pun and, right. and the total opposite because I've been at the very bottom already. So I'm, I'm happy to be, I'm just happy to be there. So, and I'm happy to be there and I'm getting fed knowledge, <laughs> wisdom. Please. I'm better in myself every day. So you need that circle around you. That's better. That's smarter. And, and it, it does wonders for you at every level. I, I like how you, how you also put a focus on mental health in a book. Um, I felt like um, it's been stigmatized so much in our community, but now we're finally starting to, 
pay attention to it in a different way. Do, do you feel like we're making changes? Could we be the first generation that actually gets it right? Most definitely. I think we're talking about it. When you start talking about anything, that's the first step because it's mm -hmm. like everybody that's dealing with something, they got their hand, they're, they got their hand in their pocket. And then once that first person raises their hand and asks the question, now you've answered a question for everybody else in the room who was, man, I'm glad he answered that. I'm glad he asked that. So I, I think, uh, especially uh, this generation here, we're more vulnerable uh, and we're, we're, we're gaining that strength to let people in and understand and then wanting help. I've never shied away from help. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I embraced it because I knew I needed help and someone who knew how to heal, help me heal in every aspect of my life from the earlier years all the way to now. So I know that I, I'm still growing and I started off late in life with everything because I was alone on this journey for a long time. So you, you have to find and let people in so that you can be a better person. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we're, we're thankful for this book. I think it's going to change so many lives. What's what's next for you? Well, my foundation right now, I'm putting a lot of time into that. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm partnering with schools uh, who, ha who they have that has a great educational background and I'm partnering with them and I'm placing a success coordinator, a mentor staff inside the school. And I'm sending kids like myself who don't have the resources and opportunities to go out and get a better education. And that was so pivotal for me once mm -hmm. I start to be around the other like-minded individuals like myself with the community, with uh, education, and that mentorship is the key. The mentor staff, the success coordinator that we're placing in that school, so someone like me to be, can talk to and go get information, life-changing information, so they won't be behind once they go to college or once they get to the NFL. That's when they start to learn about uh, investments and so many different things. We want to start this with these kids who are coming through the foundation right now. So I, I think that'll be an immediate impact on the lives of the kids that's coming through. So I'm spending time, a lot of time with that uh, and, and changing lives. And like uh, Kobe Bean Bean Bryant said, chasing greatness is, is inspiring the next generation. So you can, if you, I felt that I did great things on the field, but the game that I'm playing now, it's even better. Thank you for all you do, man. Why don't you tell everybody when and where they can get the book? Uh, you can get the book. The book's already out when your back's against the wall. It's out at your local bookstores. You can get it off of Amazon, uh, signed copies, wherever books are sold, you can get them. Make sure you guys support. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, man. And if you know you ever want to come to Baltimore, you need a place to stay. <laughs> we got we got an extra bedroom in the crib. Thank you for everything. Hey, I'll take you up on it now. <laughs>